Now, how are you students? Welcome back to our lesson in physics. And uh, today's lesson, I uh, will be looking at atmospheric pressure. My name is Mr. Joha. This is a lesson for form ones. Now, we want first of all to define atmospheric pressure and then we go ahead and look at the effects of atmospheric pressure. Now, what is atmospheric pressure? Atmospheric pressure is the pressure exerted on the surface of the earth by the weight of a column of air. Atmospheric pressure is the pressure exerted on the surface of the earth by the weight of a column of air. I want you to look at uh, a situation like this. The way we are standing, we normally have air everywhere. Air is on the surface of the earth everywhere. And this air, taking at the way I'm standing, on top of my head, I have a column of air extending upwards. This column of air has a weight, and this weight is actually exerted on my head and it creates a pressure on my head. This pressure is the atmospheric, atmospheric pressure. Although we don't actually feel it, but that atmospheric pressure is there. Each one of us standing or seated has a pressure exerted on our heads. And this is atmospheric pressure. Now this atmospheric pressure is very high at low altitudes around the sea regions, the atmospheric pressure is very, very high. But it is very low at high altitudes. As we move towards the mountains, the pressure, the atmospheric pressure becomes very low. And maybe to give you the reason roughly, is because as we go high up, uh, high up altitudes, the air starts reducing, becomes uh, less and less, and therefore the atmospheric pressure also reduces. Now, uh, we want to look at a demonstration to tell us that there is something we call atmospheric pressure. Really, because we don't see it, but we can see the effects that atmospheric pressure can do. And we want us to look at this demonstration shown on this video so that uh, we later on conclude and see the effects of it. Do you know that air can crush things? You do not believe me. Let me show you. Take some boiling water and pour it into a plastic bottle using a funnel. Do not fill it completely, just a little less than half the bottle. Cap it tightly. Now pour cold water over the bottle and watch it get crushed. What happened here? When the boiling hot water was poured into the bottle, the steam pushed some of the air out. At the same time, the air above the water surface was heated and hence expanded. This also pushed some of the air out and the amount of air inside the bottle reduced. Then when we capped the bottle, the air could not enter back in. Finally, when we poured cold water over the bottle, the steam condensed to water and the air cooled and contracted. This led to lowering of air pressure inside the bottle. As the air pressure inside the bottle fell significantly below the pressure exerted by the air on the outside, the walls crashed in. Air in the pneumatic tires in our bicycle or cars exert pressure on the walls of the tires from inside. This introduces cushioning effect and thus absorbs the shocks generated due to rough texture of the road. Ride a bicycle up a slope using a tire filled with air and ride up the same slope without air in the tires. Can you feel the difference? That is the difference made by the air pressure. That's very good. And therefore, 
uh, as we have been told, if you put a little hot water into a plastic bottle and then you tightly cork it, then pour cold water on top, the bottle crashes. We want to look at the significance of the hot water inside the plastic bottle. The hot water put inside produces steam. The steam removes the air which is inside, makes the air to escape from inside, leaving the inner part of the bottle to be partially vacuum. Now, the pressure becomes low inside the, the bottle and the pressure outside is very high. The atmospheric pressure outside is very high. So the, pre the high atmospheric pressure outside starts pushing the bottle inward and the bottle crashes. Now, it is very important, therefore, uh, to look at other effects or other demonstrations that show us that pressure, atmospheric pressure exists. Atmospheric pressure exists. And I want us to look at another demonstration that uh, helps us to see that atmospheric pressure exists. And this is this demonstration where you can have a, a drinking straw if I suck this liquid you can see that the liquid is has reached this level the lower uh, part is open, but when I close the upper part, the liquid remains there and it does not fall. Now, our question is, what is holding the water upwards? What is holding the water upwards? What is holding the water upwards is the atmospheric pressure. There is atmospheric pressure at the bottom which is pushing the water upwards and holding that water not to fall. So, atmospheric pressure exists by looking at uh, a drinking straw. What helps us to drink water from a straw into our mouth is the atmospheric pressure. As we suck, we lower, we lower the pressure inside the straw because we suck the air inside the straw and therefore create a partial vacuum inside the straw and lowering the pressure. Now the pre atmospheric pressure outside will be very high even on the surface of the water and it will push that water to enter into our mouth and therefore the water rushes inside our mouth. That shows that atmospheric pressure exists. Another demonstration that we can show that uh, atmospheric pressure exists is a rubber sucker like this one. A rubber sucker, if we push this rubber sucker, we are making the air to escape from inside the rubber sucker. Then if I place it on my skin, you can see the rubber sucker sticks. What makes it to stick? It's actually sticking there. What makes it to stick? It's because of the atmospheric pressure. The moment you remove the air, the pressure inside becomes less and as the pressure becomes less from inside, that pressure uh, becomes less and the atmospheric pressure outside is higher than the pressure inside. So the pressure outside pushes this rubber sucker to stick on the surface. And that is the work of atmospheric pressure. You can see that that is also a demonstration of atmospheric pressure. Now, we want to look at the maximum height of a column supported by atmospheric pressure. The maximum 
height of a column supported by atmospheric pressure. Now that we have known that there is atmospheric pressure around us, and atmospheric pressure supports a liquid from pouring out the way we have shown it here, what is the maximum column of that liquid that can be supported by atmosphere, atmospheric pressure? We know that we have sucked a, little, a liquid and that liquid has been supported. We can still add the sucking of another liquid And the liquid can also reach this level. That level is higher than the level we had initially. And so, liquid can be supported. Different columns of liquid can be supported. But we are saying, what is the maximum column of liquid that can be supported by atmospheric pressure? That means that there is a column that the atmospheric pressure may not support. And so, we will look at that uh, maximum column that can be supported by atmospheric pressure in our next slide. 